Afternoon guys, Sunday afternoon here in Canberra. I thought I'd do a little bit of an update on some of the fig cuttings that I'd shown last year, some of the ones that were in that grow tent and uh, were just sticks at the time so you can get a bit of an idea about how much they've perhaps grown in that time, the potential for growth from our first year cutting and in fact all of the majority of these cuttings have now been in the ground or in a pot for around eight to ten months very few would be pushing 12 months so you can have an idea about how they kind of push we can look at some of the tropicals i've pulled a lot of the shrub well pulled all the tropicals out of the grow tent and they're now in the the backyard um, the reason being in the grow tent it is extremely hot so it's summertime in australia for those overseas and even in the grow tent with the lights on 50 percent of the day the temperature still was pushing into the 40 degree to 43 degree range which is just too hot um, even for heat loving plants so i've moved them all out and um, a lot of the plants that i've talked about in other videos such as uh, these bananas if you watched my end of video uh, end of winter videos have fully popped up this particular plant that you're looking at here now has gone through uh, two or three winters three winters i believe in canberra um, since i first posted about it and it is come back yet again so it just goes to show that with a little protection we can even get bananas kind of going across in canberra but i'd like mainly to talk about the figs and we'll look at a few examples of figs that have been in there uh, maybe i'll overlap how they looked on this video so you can kind of remember what they look like in the grow tent and we'll see the different rates of growth of all of them and we won't go through every single fig because as you may know i have a good 50 60 maybe even more figs in the collection this one here is a, a col de dame noir you can see it's a, a little bit of a spindly plant so it's sent off two shoots neither of them are particularly thick they're kind of long but as it gets long as it gets taller it's like shooting off these larger size leaves so these are uh, hand sized leaves you're looking at here some of the more vigorous plants for instance this one back here again just a first year cutting this is a the uh, fikud asang which stands for uh, basically blood like blood red uh, this has put on a lot of growth it's put on a lot of diameter so if you look at the, the the diameter of the stem on this particular plant which is about the same age of this col de dame noir you can see that they've got very different growth habits in terms of the stem now one of the things we'll talk about in this video as i go around is the issues with knowing what types of figs you get so people that buy figs online like myself are very very aware of the fact that when you get a cutting it's impossible to know if it's true to type if we're getting what we pay for and i'll have a talk about some specific um, kind of your varieties as we go along this one back here this is the Maasai black vs which is the one we tried a couple of figs off of in my last video so we tasted a fig off this uh, Maasai black and we also have down here this one here is a black madeira kk and because I have such concerns about um, having a variety that's true for type, I've got several different black Madeiras from different sources in Australia. This one back here is a black Madeira from a different source. So that hopefully, even if I've got some that aren't true to type, that at least we're going to have hopefully some sorts of, um, maybe some luck in getting some that are, that are true to type. We'll have a look at some of the more expensive cuttings that I've got. So, for instance, this is one of them, apparently extremely rare in Australia, and, and it's true that I haven't seen it around. This is the Colded Arm Gris. Now, the Colded Arm Gris came to me as a cutting. Uh, this was actually only put in the ground just before Christmas. So, this cutting here is about approximately four months old. It's got a bit of burning on the leaf here from when I missed a watering uh, one particular week. So all of these different figs uh, that are going on here. And we'll go for a walk over this way. My figs literally spread all across my yards in different stages, depending upon what I want out of them. Those ones I've hardened off. They're in sun about 50% of the day. These ones, all of these plants here, some of them are plants that I've sold that will be going to people. For instance, this here is a Saskatoon berry, which is very, very rare in Australia, a service berry. Um, someone's purchased that so I've got it out of the sun to make sure it stays nice and happy and vigorous and doesn't have any risk of drying out but other figs for instance this one here is a fig that I've got that I really really want to survive it's a smith 
Um, I've got a couple of these smiths in little pots and even though it's got some leaf growth on it and this is approximately three months maybe two months since I've got this cutting I can't see any vigorous roots growing around the outside of this particular plant so it is concerning me it looks fine but it doesn't have that vigorous root growth that I like to see from the cuttings that I kind of grow Back here we have another interesting new fig that came in at the same time. This is a Capri fig, but it's an interesting one that it's a persistent Capri fig, which means that it is a male fig that holds that persistent gene. That means if you were to pollinate a female fig tree with this later in the future, um, it has the potential to produce offspring that help hold that um, persistent gene so you can have new figs that don't require caprification potentially. And this is the other Smith fig that I had at the same time. Um, from that same cutting. This one here I've moved into a slightly smaller amount of sunshine. Again, no roots showing, but uh, it's, it seems healthy enough, even though that might be the case. Hopefully they're just coming through. We have other rare ones. This one here is called Isbadanaj. It's got its first little figlet on it right now. This is meant to be a kind of banana tasting fig. Another really rare one in Australia. And because a lot of these figs come from the same source, I buy a lot of my figs from eBay. And it is very difficult to tell if you're getting what you purchase. Um, I'm going to start in my tasting videos putting the description from the buyer that I bought it from so that we can see whether or not it comes true to type. And this is probably the reason why. Look at this particular plant here. This is a Violet de Bordeaux. Now I have a couple of Violet de Bordeaux. I've got one that's a couple of years old. This is a cutting that I put in the ground this year. Because I love the variety so much, I wanted to make sure that I had true to type variety. I wanted to make sure that at least I had one Violet de Bordeaux. That was what I hoped it was. Now if we compare this plant here to the original Violet de Bordeaux that I have, which is this plant here, we can see a number of similarities. Number one, Violet de Bordeaux, the Australian variety at least, and it's probably consistent, I hope, has these long leaves. So this is a very long finger-shaped leaf that runs through here. And you can see that it's the same shape as the plant that I have here. So side by side, I'm not particularly keen to rip the leaves off. But we can have a look at, look at that. Those leaves are just about the same. Now these Violet de Bordeaux have another characteristic which kind of helps you identify them. The figlets, even the very small ones, they come with this tinted colour, so this kind of purple tinting. Uh, whereas the figlets for even other black plants, this isn't a black plant, but you can see these figlets are green. And if we have a look over here at this uh, black ashia, these little figlets start bright green and then turn black later on. Whereas the Violette de Bordeaux starts off as a kind of a, a blacky purple colour and gets deeper as it goes. Now this second cutting I have, this little cutting, has exactly the same. The little kind of uh, coloured figlets that are on here, which is a good indication that these are probably the same varieties. So I probably have the identical varieties here. And the reason I bring that up is because I have another variety here. And if we look at this variety... We can see, number one, the leaf shapes have that very long central finger, just like these ones here does on this other plant. And it is it is different. You don't usually, or you don't often get the kind of the three-fingered variety with that really long central finger. For instance, if we look at this fig just over here, they're kind of thick and chunky fingers. If we look over here, we have spade-shaped fingers, or this one here, three chunky fingers not typically the same as this really pronounced index finger as if it's giving you it's flipping you the bird that's what it looks like and this particular fig has that same shape it also has the figlets that are turning kind of brown purpley same as these figlets same as these figlets and yet this particular fig is sold to me as a black mission fig you can see the handwriting on this black mission fig and uh, we'll, we'll remain we'll take this this with us so we can see this but this was sold as a black mission however the leaves and the figlets look very very similar to both of these violet de bordeaux and that might mean two things maybe these violet de bordeaux are actually black mission or 
maybe this black mission is actually a violet de Bordeaux or potentially maybe they have um, that kind of they share characteristics now one of the uh, things about the black mission if we go back and watch my ranking videos I think it was the second or third video that had black mission in it the petioles these stems on a black mission are meant to have a little bit of red coloring now this one here you can see a little bit of a red tint around my finger here and um, perhaps you can't see any tinting on any of these black, uh, these uh, Violet de Bordeaux. Maybe we can say, for instance, this branch has a little bit of a red tinge. Maybe this branch has a little bit of red tinge. It is possible that this is actually true to type, that this is a black mission. And when the fruit ripen, I'll have a better idea. But at the moment, it looks almost identical in terms of both leaf shape and figlets to these two Violet de Bordeaux. Now, this label here is the exact same label that I have over this plant here, which happens to be the Saint Dominique's Violette that I tried the other day. And if you have a look in the pot, same label, same seller. Now, this Violette, uh, Saint Violette's, Saint Dominic's Violette is meant to be a purple fig. It's meant to have kind of deep uh, purple exterior. You can walk, go back and watch my last tasting video to have a look at that. Um, it's meant to be a kind of a pinkish sort of interior um, and it's meant to be uh, quite quite a purplish skin and this doesn't look like that. And if you read the kind of notes I attached to my St. Dominic's Violette video from the last one, um, I kind of written there that I, I do wonder whether or not it is true to type because this is more of a greeny, browny color. And let me just have a quick taste of this now I've picked it. tastes very similar to one I tried before just the other day sweet melony nothing particularly interesting no berry flavors nothing like that an ant in there <laughs> obviously likes the, uh, the sweetness as well so this to me wonders if this particular seller has selling me trees that are true to type or if they're just selling trees for the purpose of selling trees and as you know it's very difficult <laughs> and all over me to I determine when you get a cutting if it's true type you have to wait till you fruit it a few ants on this one actually so I might uh, donate this to the chickens they can have a bit of a feast chuk, chuk, chuk. bit of fig for you guys girls all right they'll enjoy that so yeah so coming back to this uh, this quandary so same seller Suspiciously looking similar plant, marked as Black Mission, but looks very, very similar to the Violet de Bordeaux. So what I'm going to start doing when I start tasting my figs this year is I'm going to put a bit of a listing next to it. We'll see the seller that it came from, the cost of the cuttings, and we'll see if they turn out to be true to type. And I hope that that, for Australians at least, is a helpful addition to our market because um, I have purchased a number of cuttings and it will be, for me, a good thing to see that, um, whether or not they become true to type. One of my little favourites over here, again another 8 to 10 month cutting, this is the Martinenka Ramada. This one here is looking true to type at the moment, we can see we've got the very first little variegated fig on there. Uh, could still turn out to be a panache, um, but we'll find out over time if it turns black or not, if we're going to have our, our beautiful Martinenka Ramada. We've got our Celeste over here. One of our Celeste, we've got a couple of Celeste. This is actually a nursery sold Celeste. So it'll be interesting to see how it turns out to my cutting Celestes. We have, gosh, so many. This is another Col de Dame Noir. So we saw one over here. This is a different one, different area, different pot. We have Noir de Barbentan. We have, gosh, what do we have here? Uh, Safrana Preto. We've got another black Madeira down here. As I said, I bought a bunch of black Madeiras to make sure that I got one at least that were true to type. Over here, our panaches are coming on. So our panache figs are getting ready to start swelling and ripening. So we'll be tasting some more panaches this year. Last year, a lot of them split. So I'd like to see maybe uh, this year some panaches that don't split so we can taste them a little bit better. What else do we have? Gosh, we've got just so many figs and I guess it's an idea of how 
successful the rooting was. This is a fig here, putting on its first fig right now. Um, it's a cutting that I got. Somebody that came to Australia, it's actually an interna international guest, I'm not sure where he got it from, but he knew that I collected figs, and it's called Moroccan Giant. It's come quite well, it's a, quite a vigorous tree popping up, so we're going to see what that fig is like in a little bit of time. We have Delia Signora Hivernica, putting on a couple of figs right now. We have I-258 sitting in here, so this is my I-258, very lethargic grower this one compared to other ones, it's got just got this little one stick popping up. Red Canardry over here, which is one of the fastest cuttings that I've ever rooted. Flanders. Spanish dessert in here. If you remember, we did an experiment with my Spanish dessert. I think I might have reused the pot. Um, the Spanish dessert was the one that I put out in the cold to see how the cold would affect it. And it was doing all right, actually. It died back. Yeah, it's been repurposed, the pot. It died back, and then one of these filthy little fig destroyers, I took the fence down to give them a bit more free-ranging, and they pulled it apart, and it was horribly annoying rip the whole uh, the whole stick out of the ground so not much I can do about that it died unfortunately we have Galicia Negra Galicia Negra here again we have our Ishia Black we have this is a thick wood Oxus Brown so this is an unknown heritage cutting uh, we'll see how that goes and over here this is an Oxus Honey so two from the same seller, wasn't sure what particular heritage varieties it's come out to me. We'll test them when they grow. Ishia Green putting on a heap of figs. So we'll taste some of these figs as the season goes on. We'll see how good they are. This fig here is an example of a, a fig that I mistreated for a very, very long time. Uh, this, these chickens again, they, they cause me a problem. You can see where that pot which I've tipped over, there's a little there's a little gap in the fence behind the fence in the garage and these these are horrible adventurous trooks would squeeze their way through the back of the shed. They would escape into the yard and they'd do horrible things like rip out my Spanish dessert. And so to stop them doing that, there's actually a whole lot of vines growing in there now, but I put a pot there and the original pot that I put there was this one here. And being behind a fence and uh, hard to access, I hardly watered it. I let it really die back. It's a heritage variety. Again, I've lost the label for the seller I bought it from. Didn't know the label. It had no leaves on it all last season. It was really just mistreated. It got fully sunburned. You can see the entire stem up here is, is totally devastated. It was sunburned all the way up. The stem that was growing on it died off totally. And I thought, look, I'm going to be nice to this plant. I pulled it out. It only it was in a pot with about half a pot of soil as well at the time. So I repotted it up. I gave it some new soil. And it's thriving since then. It's put on a lot of leaves. And we'll actually taste some figs on it this year. So we'll see what I very nearly killed. Uh, what sort of plant that I almost <laughs> let die without even knowing what it was. We've got, I've got a bunch of Capri figs in my collection, which I thought um, I'm going to plant out. Still will do, because I want to kind of introduce... Uh, fig wasps to the area where I'm growing all my plants. This is an interesting one that I just love for no other reason that the stem actually grew in this weird corkscrew shape. So I planted the cutting a couple of years ago. The cutting grew up and it grew up and it grew up and for no reason that I could determine it started to grow back down again and then it realized that it had an issue and it <laughs> turned around and started going the other way. So I'm very curious to see how this uh, actually forms over the life of the plant. I've never seen kind of this cork shoot screw shape of a plant before um, it's, it's it just got very confused one day and we'll see how that grows I'm just curious to see how that is what else do we have down here we have a, a, a thing called Ziti which is putting on its first figs now Ziti is meant to be a Smyrna type so I may not ever taste that uh, a daily's variety called black pecone oh, also many plants we have our Adriatic JH down here no figlets on this one yet, at least I haven't noticed any. Oh look, we got our very first figlet starting now, so I'll be able to try that hopefully in several weeks, four to eight weeks. Oh look, there's another one down here, just starting out on the Adriatic JH. 
we have this is our Spanish dessert again is it Spanish dessert over here in the corner I've got even more plants so petite albique growing down here again so petite albique is often thought of as a synonym for violette de Bordeaux and you can see yet again that the figlet that's growing on this particular plant has that kind of green purpley um, color to it which is very reminiscent of those two violet de Bordeaux we looked at um, if you compare it to this figlet on this tree which is bright green you can see the immediate difference in colors this particular plant is oh, it's a green fig a Lebanese fig just a little unknown called sweet large this is actually a pepper vine which I'll plant out in my new plant in more tropical locales cherimoyas over here this is a brown turkey from a nursery and the reason I really want a brown turkey is I suspect that, that fig that we talked about over there that was maybe a little bit suspect could be a brown turkey it'd be good to have a real brown turkey on hand to kind of compare them to we have some mulberries over here that's another plant that I've sold on and maybe the plant that we'll end this with the plant that we'll end this with is this one here so this is a plant that came to me that I found on a post on um, Facebook someone mentioned seeing this plant and on an island just off the coast of South Australia in Australia there's an island called Kangaroo Island now in Kangaroo Island it's a little bit segregated from the mainland and it was apparently visited by some of the first settlers to Australia uh, back in the day in the 18 late 1800s mid 1800s something like that and they say that those cuttings were bought across by the English at that time now when I planted the cuttings I, I called up the vineyards and I said please would you send me some cuttings and they did and I noticed two things number one I noticed that every one of the cuttings I had from this particular plant fruited almost immediately they sent me a huge package they sent me at least 15 cuttings so I, I got a lot of cuttings out of them so not only did they come immediately but they also came and they didn't appear to be affected by the fig mosaic virus at all now it makes me wonder this vigorousness this kind of quickness and speediness of growing is it because they're from an island in Australia that was isolated and hasn't had that same exposure to the virus maybe it's one of the last few holdout places in uh, Australia maybe even uh, the world outside of other islands that maybe isn't affected by the fig mosaic virus which is actually um, almost affects every single cutting you can buy every plant from every nursery they're all affected by this virus now the other things that I notice is that these particular plants these kangaroo cuttings I'm calling kangaroo island or kangaroo um, because that's where they came from the leaves that they grow are huge compared to other fig leaves is it the vigor of the plant because they're not affected by the virus I don't know but if you have a look at the size of these leaves on such a young plant compared to other plants of a similar age you can just see that they're absolutely massive they've just got this vigor and this growth and this bright green look about them this is another kangaroo island cutting that I have here. You can see again, look at the size of that leaf. Look at it compared to these other plants. And I can see some mottling on this leaf here. So maybe there is some fig mosaic virus present. I don't know. These other leaves look a little bit mottled as well. But the vigor remains. They've got the largest leaves of any of the ones in the, in the kind of collection that I have. They're absolutely massive. If I look at the next biggest leaf in the collection, maybe maybe on this one back here this is a pretty big leaf oh, it doesn't want to come off this is a pretty big leaf so compared to some of our other figs this is a big leaf but compared to these kangaroo island leaves they are just dwarfed they're massive it's a huge plant huge leaf um, again this, this is a big leaf this is these are about the same size actually but as you can tell so I'm very curious it's possible as well though that now this has got a bit of um, growth into it maybe it contracted FMV I don't know all I know is that when they fruited originally they sprouted they were totally green and clear vigorous beautiful unblemished leaves so I'm very interested to know about these kangaroo island figs and we'll keep an idea we'll watch them and see how they grow over time and I'll report on them as they fruit Socorro black down here 
So anyway guys, it's a, I know I haven't gone through every single variety, I just don't have the time. But I hope that's a good overview and understanding of how the figs that are in the tent were and are growing from that time on. And as we do, I'll keep an eye on them. I'll update everybody and yeah, until that then, until those videos, I'll just have to see you guys in the next video.